Hey guys, in this video we're going to be talking about the FITS law. The FITS law talks about uh, the time to acquire a target as a function of the distance to and size of the target. Now there's a lot of mathematical complexity involved here. There are some constants, but all you as a designer need to care about uh, is the actual time or the ease that we're gonna provide the user is gonna be dependent on two variables. The first one is the distance from where the user feels comfortable or where, where he currently is and the size of the actual object. So these are two things that we need to consider. So the takeaways from this particular law are, the first one, touch targets should be large enough for users to accurately select them. So again, if they're very small and they're placed together, then that would be very hard. The second one, touch targets should have ample spacing between them, so that's the other one. And the third one, touch targets should be placed in areas of an interface that allow them to be easily acquired. So obviously they should not be obscured, so on and so forth. All of these seem pretty obvious, right? Well. They are obvious, but all of us, like even me included, like we can make mistakes when actually uh, designing interfaces. So let's go and see some examples. So the first one, anytime you actually design for, let's say mobile devices or desktop devices or real life devices or products, so on and so forth, you have to, first of all, figure out what the user's natural position is, which elements are actually going to be easily accessible. And then you have to figure all of those things out. But the first thing that you need to consider is how the user uses your product, device, or application, whatever it is. So for example, when you're talking about mobile devices, we know that there's a particular thumb zones, for example, and this obviously may vary if the user is uh, right-handed or left-handed, but if the user, this particular case, especially since a lot of users are actually right-handed, this is gonna be the structure of, or the interaction pattern that they're gonna observe. So for example, the bottom left, portion is going to be bottom left to center left so on and so forth is going to be very easy to interact um, even the middle is going to be quite comfortable it's going to be inconvenient to reach at the top but the top the top left and the bottom right is going to be slightly hard and obviously this may slightly vary for left-handed users so if we look at some examples of how popular applications do it like this is actually one example of how uh, of one of the applications that I've created so as you can see, the primary content that's in the middle, that's like really easy to interact with is actually sitting at the middle. You can obviously scroll quite easily in the middle. You can interact with the content, so on and so forth. The secondary stuff that you see at the bottom are gonna be tabs and other secondary elements that obviously the user is not gonna interact with as much, but they're still gonna be there in a very comfortable position for users to change tabs or change the sections of the application. Though one thing to note, if again, most of the users are right-handed, then you have to consider placing some of the most important information on the actual bottom left. Similarly, for example, if you go on Twitter, if you go on Facebook, Instagram, whatever it is, like you can actually see that their feed, the one thing that's being used the most is actually the icon that's on the bottom left, because again, that's the most used thing and that's the thing that users are gonna interact with the most compared to some of the other information like profile settings, so on and so forth. And then obviously we have some of the tertiary items at the very top, which users may not interact with the most, especially when they're actually just viewing or they don't actually just need to go to the menu or their profile, so on and so forth. So let's have a look at some real life examples. So here, if we have a look at it uh, in WhatsApp, Messenger, Contacts, we can see that even in Contacts, we can see that the most important thing, perhaps the, the favorites, which you've actually favorited, which you want to access again and again, is actually on the bottom left. Because again, that's an interaction that you want to pursue. But apart from that, we can see most of these devices actually place their content area, their scrollable area that the user is going to interact with the most in the middle. Why? Because again, that's going to be uh, how they're going to consume information, how they're going to interact with information, so on and so forth, in the middle. And then obviously on the, on the top, we have some slightly Rest, less pronounced and slightly unused actions, like for example, editing the list, uh, going to your profile, creating a new chat, so on and so forth. People usually have the chats that they want in front of them, so not a lot of users keep on creating these new chats. So again, we can see some of the examples of that particular law being applied here. If we look at some of the other examples, which I've shown in some of my previous videos as well, is you have the messaging area at the bottom. Obviously, that's gonna be our secondary use case. 
and the viewership that the user is going to feel comfortable with they want to play messages so on and so forth they want to star messages all of the content areas actually going to be in the middle and then slightly up so slightly unused actions like making a call or doing a video call obviously i am not saying that people don't use that they definitely do but they're not as frequent if we compare uh, people looking to messages which is going to be the center area actually looking and reading messages and then typing messages so obviously typing and looking messages in this particular context is going to be much more frequent compared to let's say calling or video calling people or going back and even going back for example i've actually mentioned it in one of my previous screens as well let me just go back to it so actions people rarely use like menus and profiles on and so forth so these can also be triggered we understand that these are very important to actually go to so these can actually be triggered by swiping gestures as well so a lot of the times like applications for example going back so on and so forth even specifically on ios can actually be triggered just by swiping the screen left or right people we as designers understand that it's really hard for users to do those actions so we allow them to perform them by swiping gestures especially the back one now this is going to be like again mobile related this particular section so now we're going to move to let's say desktop related example so let's talk about like the f-shaped reading pattern on desktop well if we actually go to a great website which i'm going to recommend like the nngroup.com they have a lot of popular like ux articles and a lot of like great ux research so here we can see like people generally have an f-shaped pattern like it's not strictly f-shaped but you can actually draw a, a correlation with the letter f and their reading patterns so we can see some examples here the first one is an article in the about us section of a corporate website the second one is a product page on an e-commerce site and the third one is a search engine result obviously we can see that it's probably google so on and so forth so here we can actually see some of the f-shaped pattern actually being used so on google if we actually go and take a screenshot of it you can see some of the content is actually first of all we have uh, some important content at the top like for example searching um, the particular tab so on and so forth and then we have the content at the in not necessarily in this in the complete center but slightly on the left matching the f shape pattern similarly if we go on medium we can see that we have some of the important information like for example your followers whatever it is or the people that you're following at the top and then we have your reading or the content that you actually want to read in the middle and the scrolling list in the middle similar to how for example the scrolling list what was actually in the middle on mobile devices as well and then we have the more the more uh, uninteracted or for example least interacted information on perhaps uh, the right i'm not saying that this would not be interacted with but if you want to place important information you have to place it uh, on the left and close to the top similarly i guess like we can also see some of the examples in outlook for example this is my own outlook and we can see that selecting emails are actually reading the titles and the emails and the folders they're actually placed on the left some of the primary actions are placed at the top like the reason we don't want to place them at the bottom because that actually is not relevant to the f shape pattern so we have them on the top we have the selectable list uh, on the left and then we have the content on the right and even when we have the content on the right it's starting from the top left even in the center section so again that's also following that f shape pattern now just a disclaimer here that some applications for example like chatting applications like mattermost the organization that i work for or slack or discord may actually have a slightly different pattern and users may be comfortable with it for example the, the text area or the chat mes messaging area or the chat box at the bottom and then messages actually coming at the bottom so there are going to be subtle differences even on desktop as to how users use a particular application so when you're making decisions you have to figure out how users actually use your product and avoid generalizing all applications or all um, behaviors underneath one umbrella so that's really important now all of these examples are not just going to be applicable in let's say digital products but these can actually be real we can actually see real life examples as well so here i actually have one example of ac controls or basically just controls in cars so the the one on the left the honda weasel or i think like it's the honda hrv um, abroad can we can actually see that the controls on on the multimedia controls the the, the ac controls and the seating controls are actually on the left but these are touch screens and this is actually quite problematic because my focus when i'm driving the car is actually on the steering wheel and i'm looking straight right 
So if I actually have to interact with these, I can see that the spacing in between these elements is very minimal. So again, this particular example is actually not following um, this the fits law properly because again, the spacing in between these elements is really, really minimal. And then there's the ease of or the, or the size of the buttons when we're talking about the size of the buttons. In this case, these buttons can also could have been physical and bigger. If they were physical, it would be much easier for me to interact with them without even looking at them. But now if I actually have to interact with them, I actually have to take my eyes off the road and actually look at them in order to interact with them. On the contrary, if we look at, let's say, the Honda Civic or let's say Mercedes or some of the Audi examples, we can see that some of the controls, even though these are also modern cars as well, are not touchscreen necessarily. Some of the important controls are still physical knobs that I can still interact with without taking my eyes off the road. I can interact with some of the other buttons. They sometimes have a very particular shape as well, informing me that, uh, that what the type of button it is and the type of function that it's going to serve. So all of these are really important examples. And obviously the touch screen may look good, but it, it goes uh, against the fits law. And again, it does not provide me the ease to actually interact with them. But because again, the size of the buttons in a physical case can also be the physical structure of a button and how easy it is and how differentiated it is from some of the other buttons beside it. So that's really important. Again, another example that I would want to point out is the PS are the PS4 controls. So as we can see some of the obscure buttons, for example, like the, the center button that's actually rarely used is actually in the middle. And in this case, when you're actually holding the device, and I have some examples here as well, going to the middle or actually going to the middle button is gonna be one of the hardest thing that you can do. Because again, if you're holding the device from the left and the right from both of your hands, placing the button in the middle, you actually mostly you have to take your hand off of the controller and then press it. Otherwise, it's gonna be quite hard. Whereas the most comfortable, comfortable positions that you're going to be interacting with are gonna be uh, the knobs that are seen here and obviously the buttons the arrows the arrow buttons or the the four uh, Generic buttons that you actually see and even these settings for example the settings or the options button so on and so forth Are also less obscure because again those are not frequently used when you're playing games so on and so forth Similarly if you look at one more example just another example and I don't think that particular example is linked to the slide So I'm just going to show it like this so in this example, we can see some remotes. And in this remote example, we can see two different controls. So the first control actually points me when I'm actually holding the device, it shows that I have a power button at the bottom. And then I have the YouTube and Netflix buttons prioritized. So what does that what does this tell me? It tells me that the controller or the manufacturer of the controller wants me to interact with the bigger buttons and wants to obscure uh, the turn the power off button in this case. It's still slightly Usable especially the power off buttons, but sometimes they're actually at the top which make them like really hard to reach to so that's actually Prolonging your use of the particular device or the television It's actually increasing your screen time and I have a really bizarre example of people doing that uh, especially in the Apple TV remote for example so you don't even see a power button, especially if you're, if users are coming from, let's say Android devices or smart TVs or something, and they're using Apple TV, they, they wouldn't really know how to actually turn this device off. And once they know, so for example, like I'm just gonna tell you how this works. So you can actually turn the TV off by pressing this uh, desktop button or like this, whatever this button is, like whatever you wanna call it. So you keep on pressing it and after a while it gives you a prompt and then you can put it to sleep or turn it off, so on and so forth. So this actually not only obscures the power button, it actually place, places it inside uh, of a multi-step screen. So you can't really just press a button and turn the TV off, rather you have to keep on holding a particular button that's first of all, not even obvious and then you have to perform another action. So all of these things are examples of deprioritized actions that you don't want users to, take, users to take. So this is again a decision made by Apple themselves and we can also make certain decisions that, are, that we think are gonna be not only beneficial for our product, but most importantly are gonna be beneficial for the users of our product. And with this, I'm gonna end this video. I think it's already quite long, but I think it's really important for you to think about these things and to apply these practices when you're designing products so that we don't just think about ourselves, but, you, but we also think about 
the sustainability and the wellness of our users as well. So that's pretty much it. Do subscribe to hit the bell icon. I'm again going to be covering a lot of laws. Hitting the notification bell is gonna inform you every time a new video is uh, updated. So do hit that and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.